welcome to my channel. My name is Dodgy, and welcome to Wicked Wednesdays. I also want to give props to the creator who made this YouTube video because for real, like I'm new at making my own YouTube videos. I do all my editing, music, everything by myself. Just this introduction alone, bro, bravo. Like literally like something for me to like aspire to and look up to. I was recommended this video because of the controversy that follows it. This is going to be a whole new experience for me and I want you to come along for the journey. So if you like this video, if you like this kind of content, let me know guys by leaving a like, subscribe to my channel if you aren't already subscribed. I do play mostly video games on my channel, but try to like branch out a little bit. I want to do more than just playing video games, guys. Like I love video games, but I want to do more. So this is just me trying to expand my horizons of sorts. So you could also follow me on my Insta of Grams. If you have any recommendations or suggestions of what you want me to watch, react to, whatever you guys come across, if you want to just like send it to me or message me, let me know guys. So this video was recommended to me by the very own Jolly Avocado. He came across this video and asked me if I knew about this creator that we're going to specifically talk about. Um, and I have seen them. I have seen them in the earlier days of, of uh, the Tiki Talk, um, especially during COVID. I remember that they were very, very popular with giving Google facts, like you type up whatever you want and they would pop in out of nowhere like did you know that elephants are actually afraid of mice did you know that pluto is no longer a planet did you know that babies have nightmares and they can also see ghosts yeah <laughs> you do your own thing um it's entertainment nonetheless but i'm getting ahead of myself guys so let's actually watch this video um it was posted as of right now of me recording this it was posted three days ago from the creator Cruel World Happy Mind. Already, I already love this person's uh, name for their YouTube channel. Um, she looks adorable and I absolutely love her background for her, her little picture to subscribe. I'm, I'm going to probably subscribe at the end of this. We'll see. But the video that we're going to watch today is called Only JS TikTok's Most Hated creator. I'm probably only going to show things that really speak to me that I feel like I need to interject and talk about. So um, if you guys want to watch the full video, it is a 44 minute video. Um, I will link her channel and the video itself down below. With that being said, guys, grab your snack, grab your beverage of choice because you're probably going to need it. And grab a stuffy and maybe some lit candles for, you know, blessing of the area because we got to make this area pure. If it is as raunchy as I think it's going to be, whew, we are in for a treat. I told you I was an extremely toxic, hateful person. It is so hateful and it is so violent. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo tasting platform. Today's episode of What Are People Mad Me For Now? In my past, I said disgusting things to people. They made Videos about it! Disgusting people like you are who make me and other disabled people feel incredibly unsafe in the world. Can you please leave me the f alone? Nobody that's famous on TikTok or YouTube means f all right, We're all lucky. That's it. Well, that introduction alone is really all I need to know about this person. Woo. And if you're wondering why the words are backwards, just, just, just pay no mind. Pay no mind to that child. We don't... We all need to, to question things. Let's just let's just listen with our ears and watch with our eyes. We got this. 
told you I was an extremely toxic, hateful person. Like I was just mean to everybody. I got into arguments for no mm. goddamn reason yeah. and said awful shit just because it's, it shouldn't sound like an excuse and I don't want it to sound rage. like that, but like it was just like I hated myself so I hated everybody kind of thing. When does drama become too petty to be important? How far back into someone's past is it acceptable to examine them and determine them cancelled? And does hating an influencer really help anyone? For me growing up, cancel culture wasn't a thing. Uh, there were scandals all over the place. Like you had Monica Lewinsky, you had the whole Britney Spears shaving off her head thing. Like, that's the kind of drama that I grew up with, you know? But, you know, even, even like, O.J. Simpson and, like, the whole thing with uh, R. Kelly with the, with the shower thing. But I think the whole cancel culture started probably around, and I could be wrong, leave a comment if, if you know exactly when it happened, but I think it happened around, like, 2017? 2016 something like that like really once tiktok started becoming like really big i guess um and just people just started getting canceled just left and right i went on her tiktok she still has a bunch of followers she still has a bunch of videos that she is making she's still producing more content for her followers so she's not canceled because if she was canceled she wouldn't have a tiktok account still i don't think so i don't know it's just my observation i think it's kind of it's interesting to be examined by millions seen and rejected for who you are is a terrifying thought and the harrowing reality for only jayas only Someone jayas has become tiktok's most hated creator while only jayas has amassed almost 18 million followers on tiktok and over 3 million only js first person so as of july 30th only js currently has 18.1 million followers so clearly she is doing very well um with gaining new followers on her at least tiktok so according to her link tree she has a bunch of stuff uh she has a playlist she has tiktok youtube instagram twitch js coin the heck is a JS coin? What is a JS coin? I guess it's like a, a Patreon. Uh, but she has a one on one Zoom call for 25 minutes for $100. All right, so she's doing well. She's doing fine. Only JS has 18.1 million followers as of July 30th. So she's not hurting by any means, according to. To what I can see on here. And she's charging people a sub for a sub, a follow up for a follow. So I don't know who would pay for that. I wouldn't pay for that. But I mean, to each his own, I guess. They've also gained a large following of people who hate them as well. Currently, there's a change.org petition to ban only JS from TikTok that has over 440,000 signatures. JS was caught in a scandal due to some racist remarks by JS being revealed. Ooh. JS apologized by stating they would lift black voices and share their platform with creators of I absolutely despise when people do stuff like this. Especially when you are of the Caucasian persuasion and you want to enlist people of the darker tones to help you not look so bad. That just, that just irritates me. It, it just irritates me when, when people do that. But has failed to hold up on any of their promises. Of course. And this is like one of those things that for me personally irks my soul. To uplift their voice. It's just to uplift their voice. Is it though? Or are you just trying to like save your own skin there? Their problematic issues have also branched out to them making a joke about robbing disabled people and hosting rigged giveaways. Isabella what? has a following of 13.5 million followers on TikTok that see videos like this. Please sign the petition to help get OnlyJS off this app 
and make it safer for all creators. So how did this all start? And how did public perception of only Jaius completely shatter? And through it all, who is the real Isabella Avila? The hated only Jaius or the loved only Jaius? Is it both online personas existing at the same time or is it neither? I think it's paradox. Maybe she's both one in the same. She's both this disgusting, revolting person who uses people so that she can gain her platform and grow as a creator. But she's also like really sweet and really nice. And she just wants to help people. And she wants to educate people and bring joy to other people's lives. It's a paradox. We just hit 15 million followers on TikTok. That's insane. It doesn't feel real. I can't comprehend that number or how many people just know my face. Known by their internet alias, Only Jaius, who was born Isabella Avila and calls themselves Bella, Only Jaius, you can call me Bella, started TikTok in October of 2018 under the username Only Jaius. The word Jaius is an Indonesian word for something so unfunny that you can't help but laugh, or someone who tries too hard to be funny. At the time, Bella also worked as an employee at Best Buy in order to make some income. When I first started out on TikTok, I would go home after work and still be in my uniform while I made videos. So that's actually when I first started seeing her, is when she was wearing her Best Buy uniform and she would do TikToks still in her uniform. But someone at their workplace eventually found these videos of and course. sent them to Best Buy Corporate, who fired Isabella shortly after. I got fired from Best Buy. I was working at Best Buy making videos in my uniform they found out about oh, it, yeah, not yeah. even at work, like before work, after work, just in my uniform, they found out about it, told me to delete the videos or we're gonna fire you. So I deleted the videos and then they fired me. Bella, That's why you don't post anything. Doesn't matter what your profession is. You don't post in whatever uniform that you have. Don't even, don't even record around your, your place of work because if they find it, if they see, hey, that's our office or that's our headquarters. I mean, kiss your, caboose goodbye because i mean you ain't gonna have that job especially if you're doing a tiktok that is controversial or whatever it doesn't even have to be controversial just don't do it guys it's not worth it getting fired made them realize that they wanted to pursue content creation full time full two weeks time. later i had a million followers so it ended up kind of working out like getting fired was the best thing ever because i could just focus on making That's videos crazy. it seems for isabella this was final i also feel like that only works if you have a good support system and you have money if you are well off or if your parents are well off but it is so much more harder if like you literally have nothing if you come from nothing if you have no support system if you have to work for a living god forbid you have a family it's a lot harder so only jayus became isabella's brand and soon isabella themselves became known as only jayus and Bella began to upload consistent content fueled by the need to make something of themselves. And by October of 2019, only a month after accumulating 100,000 followers, Isabella reached 1 million followers on TikTok. I also feel like, again, that, that plays into the fact that she didn't have a job. She could just make content, like just constantly, like, uh, you know, just upload one thing after an another. Especially if most of her content was information that you could easily Google online. You could just easily, one after the other, like you can just easily pick up facts, random facts. Google random facts. Make a minute long video on that. There you go, content. It's smart. It's really smart. So it's, it's honestly no wonder, like, because the algorithm from what I know is like, it, the more content you push out, the further it's gonna go. And in that same month, Isabella created a YouTube channel, also going by the name Only Jayus, where they uploaded a similar format of content. And the main type of content that Only Jayus posts are fact-based videos and comedic videos about science and psychology, usually in that sort of life hack form or giving out quick tips. Psychology tricks that work on kids that I know work because I have like a dozen younger siblings. Here are three things that you should probably look out for in somebody else's body language. Which is definitely engaging as mm -hmm. a content form format but yeah. i also worry about the accuracy of it especially that oh sorry girl when you have to
Oh god, I'm sorry. I keep pausing you in the weird places. Okay, we're gonna just do it this way. That's how I felt with, with the content. It's like, yes, it's entertaining. Yes, it may be true, but is it actually true? It seems unlikely that you're going to actually do your research and due diligence in the content you're posting, and it seems more likely that you're probably going to spread a lot of misinformation, which only JS has been called out for a ton of times. A psychology fact. In fact, the only psychology fact you need to know. No properly trained psychologist is going to be talking about psychology facts because that's not how psychology works. But looming over this new... <laughs> th I, I like that lady. I don't know who she was, but that was adorable. It's not so much about what other people think about me, but that I'm afraid of letting myself down. Despite Isabella's seemingly uncontroversial brand of informational style content, only JS has gotten into a ton of controversy. It does not get any worse than that. It is so hateful and it is so violent. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo tasting platform. You're a bad person. Ooh. Frankly, I think JS is a bad person. Isabella is known for not taking criticism very well. He did not like that answer. He won't leave me the alone. Responding to almost every single hate thread that they're involved in, which is a dark path that I really don't recommend for anyone who spends any length of time on the internet. I agree with that. If you can't handle constructive criticism or hate or any kind of um, negative feedback, you probably don't want to be any kind of social media content creator because no matter what you do in life, you're going to get backlash. You're going to get haters. I I mean, I cosplay from time to time and I've, I've received it. If you can't handle criticism on the internet of any kind, then you shouldn't be posting. If it causes you anguish, if it causes you drama, think of your own mental health. If you spend your time focusing on hate, your online world will quickly become consumed with it. In my past, I said disgusting things to people, and I am so ashamed of myself for using racist rhetoric and derogatory language to hurt others. This hostility surrounding only JS was only amplified even more when Isabella tried to expose another content creator on TikTok. I didn't know that she tried to expose another person, so... I don't know how I feel about that either, but that's interesting. One who they believed were copying their videos. So only Jay has put on her Instagram, this dude copied my content more than once, and when she crawled me out, I threatened her and then delete the comments. And I found the contents off Google. And then somebody sent me her video and I was like, yeah, she made it. And then she got really aggressive. I said, hey, you made it first, that's fine. But then it started to get really bad. Like people started sending me stop threatening and taking only Jay's content. You know what I'm saying? I was like, wait a minute, what 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 is this? At this point, everybody's copying everybody. I never threatened her. I just said she gaslighted her fans, as in making her seem like the victim in a lot of things that she does wrong. The audience sided with Jonathan, and Isabella received a massive influx of comments basically calling her out for trying to send a bunch of hate to another creator. I do not- Which is not cool. That is not cool, by the way. If you're a creator, do not send hate to another creator ever. Like, it's just not- it's not kosher. It's not good. Like- that's bad juju waiting for you to get bit back, you know? Own information. I think it's okay for other creators to do fact videos. I, it literally does not bother me. I just think it's really weird when other big creators think it's okay to copy my video word for word and act like you didn't. Did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on who you are as a person and the things that could possibly happen to you? Yo, did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on you and the things that can happen to you in your life? People born in March are way more likely to have asthma. And I can actually speak to this one because my little sister, the only one born in March, has asthma. I need fact checks. Is that true? Does she really have a sister? And was her sister actually born in March? Because I have a hard time believing in that. I was born in July. I was born with asthma. I had to have a breathing machine for years. Probably up until I was like maybe seven or eight. So I don't think that this is true. Are actually more likely to have asthma. And I can speak to that because my cousin, the only person born in March, has asthma. I can see what she's talking about though in this 
in this scene. I can I can totally understand her frustration in like she made a, a video and then he probably made this shortly after. I don't want Jonathan to get hate, so stop with the fucking death threats that he's saying he's getting, but he knows exactly what he's doing. He tried to copy this video when I first posted it and now he's trying again months later. And I think as bigger creators, we should be better than that. And I think he should just own up to it. Don't get me wrong, the two videos from the two creators on TikTok are very similar. And yeah. it does suck that copying content is so commonplace on social media. There definitely is a difference between being inspired by someone's content and then blatantly mimicking it. That being said, I think what most people were angry about with this controversy was the way that Isabella handled calling out Jonathan. Because they said things that weren't true, like Jonathan threatened them, and called them out so publicly before giving Jonathan an opportunity to explain explain themselves. That wasn't the proper way to handle the situation and made Isabella look bad. I feel like I should switch the image. All right, I switched it back. I, I, I re-reversed I re it so now you guys can actually read it. I feel bad because like certain parts are like, it's just a wall of text and everything is backwards. Uh, so I changed it back and continued to focus on the fact that they thought Jonathan copied their video. And this is where a side to Only Jayus began to shine through that their audience really did not like. Because Only Jayus not only responded to hate poorly, but mm -hmm. was steadfast in believing that they're always the one in the right. And well, that rubbed people the wrong way. To insult someone for being in a relationship with a black person by calling them a nigga? Ever? It does not get Ooh. any worse than that. It is so hateful what? and it is so violent. Bro, a forced, fake, watered-down apology will not cut that. Girl, we don't need you in your mayo-tasting platform. She's canceled in my eyes and that she's a piece of crap. The two moved on and continued to grow until Isabella found themselves in a much more significant controversy than their others. TikTok user Freak to Gemini uploaded a video where they exposed Isabella using racist and anti-gay slurs in a conversation with another white creator in 2016 where they called this other white creator an n-word lover. I'm gonna just say this right now. I don't care what kind of position you are in life, how much hatred you harbor in your heart. You cannot tell me for one second that you are not the the f wow i don't care how hurt you are as a person those words that means something and it it's not cuz you were hurt or angry from the hate comments, the, the, the lies, the drama. No, we're gonna just play the video and just listen to what, what her excuses are for calling somebody an, an N-word lover. That I love you no matter your sex, your gender, your sexuality, your faith, or your race. Goofy alert, guess that didn't age well, cause this you at the bottom calling someone the hard er a word used to oppress black people in my community this is why i don't trust people with savior complexes bro i feel like it's always a second agenda behind what you do i hope your parents get cancer wow wow i don't wow Isabella wrote, adding, I hope everyone you love dies. Initially, Isabella denied the authenticity of the screenshots, claiming they had been photoshopped. First, you try to spin a narrative that I photoshopped it. But they later admitted to their involvement, confirming that the screenshots were real. Isabella posted a public apology on February 13th of 2020. In my past, I said disgusting things to people. And I am so ashamed of myself for using racist rhetoric and derogatory language to hurt others because I knew what that word meant and I understood the power behind it, but I said it anyway because it was the meanest thing that I could think of. And I am so sorry to everyone, but especially to those in the black community because only you guys can forgive me for this. And there is no excuse and there are no justifications for what I said. So this is, this is a common thing that I've, I've seen 
when it comes to people making their apology videos, especially like if they if they used to like wear makeup or whatever, like they'll pull off their eyelashes, they'll make themselves look tired, like they've been crying, and they make an apology, like a lot of them, to be honest, the ones that I've seen, they're on the floor and they're crying, <laughs> doing all that, and this is the same kind of vibe that I'm getting. This is like, this is not an apology. I don't, I I haven't seen the, the whole clip, but just look at her face. She even said it right there. She knew what those words meant and she knew the power behind it, but she used it anyways because she was hurt. I personally think that the true nature of the beast came out. That's what I think. I think the true nature within herself came out. And I would not expect anybody of the black community. Now, I'm only a quarter black. I'm German. I'm Puerto Rican mostly. And I have a quarter black in me. I don't, I don't respect anybody. Th this is just me personally. I don't respect anybody that blatantly just like outright uses that word. It's a hateful word. It is just a disgusting word. I personally don't. I've never, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine just outright saying something like that. And I, I would never expect anybody, any, honestly, no community should accept that. No community. It doesn't matter if it's black. It doesn't matter if it's whatever. No community should accept that. Mm. This is probably one of the worst apologies I've ever seen. And I can totally understand why people were so outraged. And you guys deserve better. And when I first saw the screenshots, I didn't even think that they were real because I forgot. Sorry, but you could you could tell just by her mannerisms. I didn't think I didn't think they were real. I didn't think they were real. I didn't I didn't think they were real. I would never ever say such hurtful things like that ever i love my black community what no you do not and you're not sorry you're not sorry come on how hateful and how angry of a person i used to be and used it hurts to be. my soul knowing that i said used to be she used to be hateful Okay. Those things. But the screenshots and the things I've said in my past are not a reflection of who I am today. And I am so grateful for the people in my life that I met after high school, in college, at my previous jobs, and on TikTok who took their time to educate me on their, exper their experiences. Because listening to them was so powerful and a real reality check for me. So I want to take this time to take a step back and share my platform with some amazing black creators who are going to tell their story to try and educate others on the trauma that happens when we use this kind of language. You can't in one breath make a racial comment towards anybody. And then in the next breath say, I wanna uplift my black community, my black people, my black friends. You can't do that. The damage is done, plain and simple. Your truth came out, whether you wanted it to or not, it came out and the whole world sees it. The whole world can see it. She's not sorry because she's genuinely sorry. I feel she's sorry because she got caught. She got called out. She got told about. That's why she's sorry because she doesn't want to lose her fans. She doesn't want to lose the people that are following her. I mean, she's definitely gonna attract a bunch of new fans, a bunch of other kind of fans, 
the kind of fans that I wouldn't want near me, uh, certain supporters of certain kinds who want, you know, kind of a, a, a pure kind of nation, purer than what it is, because, you know, <clears throat> anyways, yeah, that kind of support, I wouldn't want, uh, let's be real, guys, I wouldn't be getting that kind of support anyways, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not their type, I don't even know what to say. Crying when we all know she wasn't, Stop. right. And right. then to the fact that when she said she thought that was the best jab to make it a person. She felt like loving a black person was so disgusting that that was the best jab to make it somebody like us. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She said that she thought of the most hateful thing that she could say to another person so basically what you're saying is the most hateful thing that you could say to another person is the fact that they love a person of color that's disgusting dude like do you not see how disgusting you are as a human come on i thought i i thought humans had a higher intellect than most animals Due to the controversy, only JS lost several sponsorships, and most notably lost their know-it-all podcast. Good. But she still has a platform on TikTok. She still has all of the followers that she does. So she wasn't, like, officially, like, canceled. She was just canceled from other opportunities where she could actually make a good profit. Like, none of this really, like, it affected her in the moment, but it's not hurting her. I can't imagine that it's hurting her just because how society is and how they like to gloss over things. But I'm I'm really glad that this creator here who made this video, I'm so happy that they they made this because like it needs to be remembered. She needs to be known as the person that straight up told a person that they were an end lover. Wow. People just couldn't forgive or forget what Isabella had said. And not only did Isabella lie about the screenshots being photoshopped to avoid accountability, but they also lied about wanting to work with other black content creators and have yet to collaborate with a single black creator on TikTok. Let me get this straight, you just told the world to rob disabled people. Disgusting people like you are who make me and other disabled people feel incredibly unsafe in the world. After controversy and controversy, things started to die down for only Jayus. However, in June of 2021, Isabella uploaded a TikTok that many in the community saw as ableist. The TikTok, which was called Illegal Life Advice, was supposed to be a satirical life hack video where only Jayus described how someone could steal a wallet from a person with a service dog. If a service dog ever approaches you but they're alone, that means that their owner's in trouble and they probably can't move, so you should follow him, because you'll get a free wallet. Um, what? <sighs> what? I don't know if she was trying to be funny. But that's just absurd. That's absurd and disgusting. Why do able-bodied people think they can make jokes at disabled people's expense? Especially because I know you think that's a joke, but there's people who will take that seriously and actually do that to a disabled person. The video was supposed to be funny, I guess, and not taken seriously. Like no logical, decent person would steal a wallet from a service dog, but the content was also just mean-spirited and came at the expense of people with disabilities. Like, even if it is a joke, it's a joke made at the expense of a disabled person. Right. And I'm sure that that's a reality that many people with service dogs are terrified of, not something that they take lightly or laugh about. And with the millions and millions of followers that only JS has, who knows who could have seen this video and taken it as genuine life advice right because you don't realize like you don't know who's watching your videos you, you you could be giving advice to like a minor and if they went off and and did that saw a person who had a seeing eye dog 
and then pickpocket them. You're teaching your viewers how to create terrible circumstances, not only for the person, the victim, uh, it, it could potentially put that, that person in jail because you're basically uh, like saying for these people to rob, like it's not in her words, not in her words, but that's what it, that's what it comes off as. Like you're, you're telling people to go rob a disabled person because they're down. That, that would be like, that would be like, that would be like going to a restaurant. And a person uh, is choking on their food, right? They got food caught in their throat. They need the Heimlich maneuver. And you go inside their purse or back pocket and just steal their wallet. They're not going to need it. Why would they need it? They don't need it. And people were quick to point this out in the comments. I'm sure not only hurt by this video if they are disabled, but also very worried about what kind of example this video would set. Let me get this straight. You just told the world to rob disabled people, incapacitated disabled people yeah. who are looking for help as a hot tip. Yeah. This is incredibly ableist and really, really dangerous. Yeah. As someone who is disabled and has a service dog for my syncope where I pass out, and you know, my service dog helps me to wake up, and if she can't do that, she would go look for help because I'm unconscious. I always am afraid what happens to me when I'm unconscious. Disg yeah, because they never, like, you never know. If you, like, I don't know what her condition is entirely, like, um, but I could not imagine just giving that kind of advice. And, 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 and that, that would be a fear of mine. Like that would be, that would be anybody's fear. If you, if you suffer from narcolepsy and you just pass out, that's a fear. Like you don't know, like you could be at the grocery store, pass out. You don't know what kind of, a person could just come up and be like, oh, that's, that's my wife. Yeah, let me just, I'll, I'll take her. I'll take her. Don't worry. He carries you out and then does despicable things. He, it's, it's an intense thought, but it, you don't know. And this world is crazy. How can you trust anybody? And, and when you have people like that giving advice, it, it makes it so much more worse. And this was when people discovered that Isabella had used a ghostwriter for their original apology video. And the first video alluding to Isabella having a ghostwriter was from TikTok creator Victoria Hammett. Let's recap, shall we? This creator said the most disgustingly racist thing that I've ever seen a big creator say on this app. Then they had someone ghostwrite their apology so that they didn't wow. lose their brand deals. And now they post this in a video that is a series of very real illegal life hacks. So we know Jace doesn't care about hurting people or making people mad, but they do care about making money. I don't know, man. From what I'm seeing, she's just pure evil at this point. But instead, they let the angry side of themselves continue to come out. And I do think it's all a facade from someone who's clearly hurting and someone who feels a great sense of rejection. I found in my... That's a good point. She makes a great point here. Um, I think a lot of it is due to the fact that she did make a big mistake. I think she is hurting emotionally inside. Because you expect like considering the fact that like when i first stumbled upon her she just seemed like this happy bubbly kind of person and then all of a sudden like now i'm getting this information where she's like this hateful monster who is also a a, a bigoted racist. um i think i think she is hurting she is hurting on the inside and she's gone so deep but at the same time, she's dug her hole so deep down that she can't come out and she's just accepted it. People who act this way are actually the most afraid of being rejected. So they tend to focus on it more and start to lash out or act out in ways that cause people to reject them. Still not an excuse. Further, I think if it's still not an excuse. If Isabella were to do what they promise and collaborate with Black creators, focus on being a more kind person to others, even behind the scenes with other creators, and take more accountability, 
they probably would have been able to completely rebuild their reputation. Though I will say I'm not sure if a reputation really even matters to people if their following is still growing, their brand is still thriving, and they're still making a lot of money. To some people, honor and reputation are really important, but to others, they're just completely meaningless. Even YouTuber Papa Gut, who followed their story, talked to them personally and offered advice, called them a bad person. Frankly, I think Jace is a bad person. But hurt people hurt people. But what has been shared of their past, well, explains a lot. Only Jaius was born Isabella Avila on April 12, 1999, in Las Vegas, Nevada. According to various sources, they belong to a joint family and are the third child among 11 children. So yeah. how many siblings do you have? 11. <laughs> what? At the age of 12, they moved to California, where they currently reside. Their parents were not married, so Isabella would move back and forth between Nevada to New Jersey to visit their parents. At the beginning of Isabella's junior year of high school, due to an unknown incident, they were placed in foster care. I didn't come out until like I was a junior in high school, yeah. uh, and everybody knew about it because me coming out ended up with like me in foster care. You're my my parents, I, I have a good relationship with my parents now, but when I first came out, is gay it was like i had to go to church school i had to learn how to be straight i had to hide it i couldn't tell my siblings it became physical at one point like it mm. just it wasn't a good experience and so when i got put into foster care everybody kind of was like oh shit. bell's in foster care they figured out why bell's gay like none of that has to do with why she said or did any of that like do does my heart go out for her for like having such a crappy childhood absolutely because like she deserved to have all the attention that any any kid desired. She deserved to have she deserves to have all the opportunities that any anyone desires. But what's wrong is wrong is wrong. You can't come back from that. That's just my opinion. You know, but I totally understand what uh this creator is saying in in the whole aspect of like this explain though it does not excuse this explains why she's so hate hateful i get i get what she's trying to say but i just i i just i i have to disagree to a certain extent uh because yes i have a lot of of, of pain in my life i have a lot of resentment for people i have resentment for that that person that made a racial slur to me out of nowhere i can have resentment for them I have no idea who they are. I, I, I've never met them. Never actually been properly introduced. And I never will. Um, I don't know why they hated me so much for just existing, but they did. And that is in their nature. But I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, well, well they only said that because they were hurting. Because I'm hurting too. We are all hurting especially in society today we are all hurting that does not give you the right or the excuse to make racial slurs to anybody of any culture there's just no excuse for that but i do understand what she's trying to say Isabella was a very hurt person whose only outlet and escape from their life was through social media. So when their platform is threatened, especially by hate comments, they, they lash out in an intense and angry attempt to protect what they may deem their peace and only escape from their past. What are people mad at me for now? So who is Isabella and what do they deserve? That isn't for me to decide. And right. Maybe not even for you to decide, but rather the collective of people who make up all of social media, who are able to decide who is worthy of attention and admiration, and who are able to take all of that away. Currently, Isabella still receives millions of views on their content. In addition, their follower count has gradually increased despite all the controversy. And perhaps this is what has insulated Isabella from seeing all of their wrongdoings. 
trends. Their TikToks are thriving, even if people don't like them. And in a way, I worry that will end up being their biggest downfall because they'll never really have to grow as a person or get past all the anger of their past and forgive those that may hate them and accept personal accountability and responsibility for the hand they played in all of this. And I think if only JS doesn't do those things, they'll continue to run into the same problems over and over again. I completely agree with that, 100%. I feel like the fact that she has still maintained her platform, she has still maintained everything other than like maybe sponsorships. I don't know. I don't follow her. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with her now. But the fact that her platform is clearly still growing on TikTok at least, and I don't know, maybe her YouTube channel is, is probably the same. I'm going to assume that it's all the same. But the fact that she hasn't been just forgotten about, her views gone down, sh I don't personally feel like she will ever learn or grow from the mistakes that she made, which is sad. Because I feel like in the beginning, like when I first knew about her, she had potential. She had, you know, an entertaining personality. You know, I, I would see her videos, she would pop up, and I'd be like, oh, hey, you know, what kind of fun facts can I learn this time, right? Whether they were true or not, that's irrelevant. But the fact that she's made these kind of controversial statements and she has received backlash but is still being praised and still receiving success... I don't think that she's going to learn from her mistakes. I don't think that, I don't think that it's over. I don't. I can definitely see her falling into the same trap. Heck, she might even see this video and be like, go ahead, you know. I'm a little content creator. I mean nothing. Only 200 followers. I can see her falling into the same trap, learning nothing from the past mistakes that she's made. Do I believe that she could possibly change if she hasn't already? I feel like everybody should be given a second chance, but there are steps and you have to prove yourself. You have to, you have to prove yourself. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do actions speak louder than words. And you, from these actions, from her actions in general, from what I've seen, all around, it, she's just a bad person. Does she make entertaining content? Possibly. I don't know. I haven't seen her since, like, probably a year or two ago. Probably since before all of this controversy happened. Let's be real. But I feel like she should put her ego and pride aside. And actually try, you know, and not have a ghostwriter. Who does that? People that are lazy and people that are not remorseful. People who don't mean what they say. It's irritating. Um, and like, it's one of the reasons why she's always in the forefront of drama because she thinks she's literally better than everybody. Well, that is all the time I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys think about this whole shenanigans. I will be linking this channel, Cruel World Happy Minds, with the video down below in the description if you would like to see the full version. Also, give them a follow because their work was really good. They put a lot of love into this video, I could tell, so uh, they deserve to be uh, followed as well. Otherwise, I love you. Don't forget your boobs.